Hi there. Welcome to Sunnyside Journals. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm Catherine. Welcome to 30 minutes of my day. I have a bit of work to do today. I got started on it a little bit and then I thought oh, I should turn my camera on because you might find this interesting. So, um, I thought of something to do with this um, piece of paper. This was the other half of um, the cover. That's the magic of Distress Ink. <laughs> These were actually the test rings before I put this on. I know I've said it before, but I always, you know, if someone new is here. So we sort of do a little recap, I guess. <laughs> um, anyhow, so I thought of something that uh, I thought... Since we've got enough pinch room here, um, let's make a journaling board. If this is a big enough book, it might be a nice thing to have to be able to slide in and have something firm to write on if you happen to be writing in your lap or something like that. So um, what I've actually got is the back cover of an old book. And I'm going to make it into a journaling board. It's uh, it's a good size. It's not the exact size of this book, but that's fine. There is so much overlapping here that um, it's really, it's not going to matter that much. When I put it in there, do you see what I mean? It's, it's going to be just fine. Um, so I'm, doing, I'm going to shabby chic it. I think. Let's move that. So I already finished taking the rest of the, there was uh, the gauze that was glued on there. There was a bit of, um, of the old end paper that was going to stick out too far. So I just scraped some off and then uh, sanded it to smooth it. So um, I'm going to get my three-in-one. Sorry, it's, I haven't used it yet today, so it's a little gunky. Hope you're all doing well. It's bright and sunny up here. I've already been out and shoveled snow. We had a little bit more last night. You know what? I, want to, I just want to be able to. Yeah, you're you're gonna try and give me grief, and I won't have it. Let's see. That one's fine. Um, so what I think, what I think I want to do is, I actually have this really awesome lace. Isn't that nice? And I think I want to sew it on the bottom so that it hangs out the bottom of the book when it's in. So it will sort of, let's just pretend it's in there. This will hang out the bottom like that. I think that'll look pretty. Um, so, but we don't do that part yet. And then this is a raw edge. I kind of like it. And I, I'm going to leave that so that you can tell that this was a book, the cover of a book. Um, but I do think... I think I still want to run a little bit of lace, but I want something thin and not too bulky. So I'm thinking I might run something like that. I wonder if that's got a right side and the wrong side. They usually do. Yes, that's the right side. So I'm thinking um, I want to do that. All right, so um, we're going to have to do a little trimming here. 
I like this deckled edge that I did and it is it's been inked so I'm enjoying that but it, I'm going to have to take some off here and obviously some off the length. Where'd my pencil go? There we go. So if I want you to there, I'm probably going to want you actually out to the edge. And then I'm going to want you probably Let's see. Let's bring it down a bit and see. Yeah, you know what? I want it a little bit more. So I don't want that top one. All right. Um, now yeah, this is going to be tricky. It's always harder to take a tiny little edge off of a paper with a tear ruler. I'm having a terrible time with my new glasses, with the bifocal. I phoned them this morning and they're trying to tell me that I'm doing it wrong. And I've worn progressive bifocals for 22 years. 22, 38, I'm 62. 24 years. Very frustrating. So I'm going to go in and talk to them. Alright, so I'm mostly eyeballing. Um, distance is wonderful, but, and reading off paper is wonderful, is fine, but I absolutely cannot read off of a screen. I can't read off my laptop screen. I'm having a terrible time even reading my phone screen. And, uh, the lady on the phone, well, you're holding it in the wrong place. Why, uh, that doesn't make sense to me. I've had these bifocals. I've had phones for years. Suddenly new glasses come on the scene and I can't see my phone and I'm doing something wrong. <sighs> Anyhow, I'm ranting. Hopefully they will get this sorted out. Now I think here's where I've got to sort of look at that shade and try and decide what... Um, I think I used walnut. I think I used walnut. Walnut is quite dark. Uh, they're going to try and convince me. Fortunately, I have 60 days um, to make sure that everything is just right. Now, I think I will still dress it a bit more, especially seeing as the back is quite distressed. I may use my new coffee. Just a little more drama.
that's a little bit better. A little more drama. All right, let's see how we did. Let's see how that, ah, thank you. You needed a little um, coercing. Yes, all right, love it. Yes. Okay, now, I still want to ink here a little bit. Uh, because just in case that shows, if I don't plop it down exactly in the right spot, I want um, where the old paper was. I don't know if you can tell. You can still see a tiny little bit of the end paper where I lifted it. And I just want that a little, a little grimier. And in there, a little grimier. Now, when I do one of these journaling boards, I haven't done one in a while. When I do one of these journaling boards, I usually give myself permission to um, make one side a little bit bulky or have fun with it and the other side very smooth. You, you really do need a smooth side just because that's going to be your side that if you want to use, if you want to be able to write in it, you've got to have, you got to have smooth side. Now this has got a freshly torn edge where I just ripped the book apart. So it, it looks freshly torn instead of looks as old as the rest of the book does. So, again, Distress Ink is your best friend to make something look old. Yeah, I like that orangey shade. I think that, uh, I think that goes nice. All right, so now I've got to decide. Yeah, I want the rough side on this side. Because then if I sew the lace down there, um, this can go in like that. So I'm trying to decide if I want to bulk up one side. Or maybe put a pocket on it. Hmm. At first I thought I wanted to use the old end paper on it. I don't really like it. I like this, and I feel like this is a bit of continuity. All right, so I think I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and glue this on. This glue doesn't want to wake up this morning. No, I didn't either. I stayed up way too late <laughs> tweaking all the little details that I like in a phone. And of course it was hard because my new glasses don't like me to be able to see my phone very comfortably. We'll get it sorted out. I always do. Now this is going to be a work surface. I'm going to make sure that it's well adhered. But I'm also going to sew around the edges just for fun. Oh, I can hear the snow plow out there. I had a little bit more snow in the night. Not much. Light and fluffy. There we go. All right, so I'm 
Yeah, I like that. I like, I love that raw edge. Very happy with the raw edge. I'm actually tempted not to run lace down there. It hides that nice raw edge. Sorry if my camera's jiggling. I had the tripod. Two legs are on the table and one leg is over on the other table. All right, I like that. Now I've got to decide if I'm going to do anything on this side or not. Oh, let's take some more of that off. You know I can't resist fraying threads. Okay, that's good. Looks like somehow I got a little bit. There we go. Um, these are great for removing a blop of 3-in-1 or Fabri-Tac. All right, so which side is up? That side's up. Oh, we've got masking tape on it. Oh, rats. So it's not, it's not a perfect. It's not quite. Four is not enough, and five is a little too much. Ugh. Grr. Wonder if I've got another one. Let's go and see if uh, we have a few little dramatic laces in this bin here. You know what? I didn't set my timer again. I'm starting to get used to having more time. This is all odds and ends of sort of dramatic lace, like bridal pieces. That's been tea dyed. It, that was pure white. Just off of, what are you doing in there? You should be over in my new, my new bin. Hmm. I thought I had a piece of drama. That's not dramatic enough. And that's not dramatic enough. So where did it go then? Is it in a different bin? Hmm. I may pause and... Oh, there's my zombie bridal lace. I may pause and go take a look. There's one I'm thinking about, and I've used it on a journal before. Oh, I think about two years ago. All right, no, I officially give up. I surrender. We'll make do with what we got. And I did like it anyways. All right, so, so it is you. That gave this time to dry, so I can't, um, I can't sew through wet glue, paper that's got wet glue still in it. Um, the ne my needle in my sewing machine doesn't like it. So if I, maybe if I can just try and fudge it a little. <clears throat> Sorry. I bet that's really loud now if I try and clear my throat with the microphone on. Yikes. All right. So... That's the underside. You know what? If we're shabby chicing it, maybe 
Maybe I don't mind if it sticks out a bit. Then I've got to decide what color thread. Hmm. Boy, that was fast, wasn't it? <laughs> no. Come on. <sighs> See, a goodly portion of your time <laughs> when you're making a junk journal is humming and hawing over does this look nice? Does this not? What about you? And then you. And then you. That's the wrong side. There we go. There's the right side. But I just want that on the bottom. I don't want it to interfere with writing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like the different shade of this. I'm going to give myself room when I trim it. There we go. Now, I'm going to glue this lightly. If I weren't putting this on top, I would be tempted to use our glitter glue because I just want to hold it in place and not necessarily do a firm hold because I will be sewing it. And I don't want shiny to show. But since I'm going to add more lace on top, I am going to go ahead and use this because this always dries shiny but it's really going to be hidden behind and then there's going to be stitching on top. Now they got right side up. Rats. That's right side up. So I am going to, I'm going to go ahead and let this hang over the edge. That's the nice thing about 3-in-1 and Fabri-Tac. You got a little slider, time for sliding. And that's nice. All right. So, <laughs> which one is, which one's up? thinking I want ribbon. Don't worry that that's been cut. I'm gonna grab some ribbon. Thinking I want ribbon. I'm over it to cross my room again. This is bad. I'm gonna have to do a lot of editing. I bet this is it. Okay. I think I paused it. Wow, this is exciting. All right, so I got all kinds of things here. 
This is a little bit more of that little sparkly trim that I've used on the ties. And I'm wondering if maybe that might look pretty on there. I like the little, just a tiny little bit of gold in it, which I like. That's kind of nice. Of course, my favorite part is where there's a little bit of burgundy. So that would be my favorite part. Hmm. I've also got this ribbon. It's a little bit older, kind of tired looking, but I like it. A little bit peachy. Yeah, this feels a little too matchy-matchy for me, that it matches the, the ribbons. Boy, there's a fine line hmm? between continuity and overkill <laughs> and matchy-matchy, which I don't necessarily enjoy. And I don't mind, it's got a bit of a dent there from where it's been on this card. Um, you can see I need to do my ribbons. I got on top of the lace thing, but I haven't tackled the ribbons yet. Now this one has one nice side. Yeah, I think I like that. Because then I can fray the edge of that ribbon. I don't... I'm anticipating it's going to go into the book this side facing the reader upon initial opening and closing. So that means I don't want to bulk up this side, but I don't mind if the ribbon sticks out a bit on this side. It'll just add to the cascade of stuff. I'm going to do a little bit of an angle to it. And I'm going to rough it up a bit. Oh, I, got an, I got an itchy ear. Itchy hand means you're going to kiss a fool. Uh, oh no, itchy nose, kiss a fool. Itchy hand, depending on which hand it is, you're either going to come into money or you're going to have to pay out some money. I wonder what an itchy ear means. I know that that's a sign of menopause, but I'm way down that. How's this for a True Confessions episode at Sunnyside Journal? And my grandchild watches this. <laughs> Actually, children, <laughs> a lot of them, enjoy this. So I think I like that. It's, I can always trim this off, but I'm thinking I'm going to like that little bit hanging out. So I'm just going to run a little bit along here. Again, I'm going to go with the three in one. Then I'm going to sew it. Now I'm not going to take my camera over to the sewing machine. Um, it's, it's just a, a, a lot of work for a moment. For a moment. So I'm going to, there we go. I don't mind that at all. That's just sticking out a tiny little bit. I'm okay with that. And like I said, if I decide I hate this, off it comes. Um, but let me explain to you what I do. I, every single time I sew on a book cover, I get questions in the comments. And keep them coming, but I'm going to try and pre-answer some questions. I have a very old um, Kenmore portable sewing machine. It was my mother's. I'm trying to remember when she got it. I'm thinking it was probably 1990. So, I mean, my machine was older than that, which is why I kept my mom's instead of the one I had been using. I had a really old one from, like, I think I got it in 1981. Um, so I, it's not that, although it's precious to me because it was my mom's, 
in a way, it's not that precious. I have some beautiful things of my mother as keepsakes. So this machine, I think she'd be very happy that it's getting used and enjoyed and it's functioning. Um, but it's like an old powerhouse. And I find when you're going to sew through a book cover, um, the older the book cover, the better. They tend to be a little bit mushier and uh, the needle will go through. But don't be surprised if you still have to use your hand on the wheel slight little bit of electricity on the pedal and just slowly I have had times where I practically had to sew the entire cover by hand cranking that needle in and out and that's not a bad thing because you can also control where it's going better uh, so don't let that scare you I I know of some junk journalers that have very expensive um, significant sewing machines and they'll still sew through paper and cardboard but anyone who's watched certainly my videos um, I'm getting my machine ready over here that is a sewer and has not sewed paper or cardboard they usually will they're just utterly shocked oh, you're doing that with your machine you're gonna ruin your machine well I haven't ruined it yet it's been a few years and uh, I actually do think in the spring I'll take it in for a cleaning and a tune-up. There's a little place in town that will do that. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting things out of the way here so I can sew. And uh, it's, I enjoy it. And if I ever had to, I would just go on Barrage Sale or Kijiji or wherever and buy another secondhand machine so that I don't have to feel that it's just too precious. I just sew right through it. Now, another thing to keep in mind if you've sewn paper, you know that there will be one side that looks nice and one side that has all the displaced paper sticking up like little, like you've got paper acne <laughs> on your paper. So you almost have to decide uh, which side you want your, the sticky ups and which side you want to look a little bit prettier. I want this side to look a little bit prettier, but here's my problem is I want to be specific with uh, where the stitching goes through. So I'm going to have to be very careful. Fortunately, I can see where the ribbon comes out on each end. So I pretty well have a good idea here. I don't want it to be precise or too pretty. I, I am going to purposefully make it wavy, uh, maybe switch back and forth between a straight stitch and a zigzag. So um, we'll see. I'm going to go do it right now so that I can show you what it looks like. I think I'm going to use an off uh, sort of a beigey color for this. So I'm going to pause and I'll be right back. Okay, so um, see what I mean? How I wanted it to look very haphazard. Um, but that still took control. <laughs> I still had to... It, this was quite soft. I was able to use a lot of electricity rather than crank by hand, um, but I still had to um, do a lot of control using my hand with the wheel. It's just the machine that I've got. That's what it does. So I have loose threads here. So here's the displaced paper on this side. I don't mind that. I am still going to push it down. And I can't remember what direction I sewed in, so I'm just going to push it down. I know that there's a, a way that's easier than the other way, but this is shabby chic, so I don't mind it's, if it's a little shabby in order to look, to look chic. <laughs> there we go. And I'll also be using some ink on it because the paper, um, because it's been sewn through, some of the paper core is showing. So I will be uh, inking that. And then I will be pulling the threads through to one side and um, knotting them. I think I'm going to use, if I can find it, aha, I'm going to use my coffee again. I'm going to use a smaller brush. 
and see if that gets into those little holes better. Oh yeah, that looks nice. I'm happy with that. I'm almost done, and then I'm going to say goodbye for today. Uh, but I will lift this up to the camera first, so you can take a look. Oh, I'm happy with this. Now, I still haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do anything with this side or just leave it be. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe we should put it in the book and see how it looks hanging out the bottom. Now, because this is fabric, it's a little more forgiving vis uh, visually, like the way it looks. Oh, I'm really happy with that. I'm happy uh, this raw side of where it's been torn off the book. Love it. All right. Where are you, Juliet? Let's see how you look. Let's just pick a page, put you in. <gasps> yes. Let me stand up. Oh, let's move this. Yeah nice oh and there's our little locket okay I'm in love so let me lift it up and show you the stitching so it's still quite the paper the displaced paper I may come on there we go I may try and go at it again with uh, something more firm usually the end of my cocktail um, my olive pick for when I use make martinis uh, it really can push these down better. So I'm, I'm going to do that off camera. But for today, that's it. Um, I'm, I think, yeah, there's nothing else. All right, I'm going to go. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care and we'll talk soon. Bye.